Hi third graders, today while I am absent, you guys are gonna learn how to draw a chameleon. Now at each of your tables, you friends should get a sheet that shows you how to draw a chameleon, as well as a handout that has real life pictures. I always like to look at real life pictures and pictures of how to draw to try to draw it as realistically as possible. Flipping over, you should each have a piece of paper. On your piece of paper, what you guys are gonna do, you're gonna write your name in a corner not too big, not too small. And then in your pencil and scissor bins, there are colored pencils and you're gonna circle your name with that color pencil. I just have a pencil, so I'm just doing that. Flipping the piece of paper over. Our piece of paper, pieces of paper are gonna go horizontally, so it's wide and short. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map out where I want my chameleon to be. I don't want it to be super tiny. I want it to really fill the page. So I'm actually just gonna go like this and just draw very lightly. It's hardly there. Can you even see it? Probably not. I drew a circle and then I'm drawing an arch of a body with a swirling tail. So I know, okay, that's roughly where I want it to be. Now, those shapes are not gonna be there forever. So that is just the sketch of mapping out. This is where I want these things to be. So from there, starting at that circle, which you friends can't really see, I'm going to do the head of my chameleon. Now I can look at the examples right here or I can look at this one right here. I'm gonna look at this guy to start. So one is step one. I'm gonna do the top of the head. And I'm gonna go up, and it's okay if it's a little bumpy. Going over my lines. I'm gonna press down and darken my lines for you friends as I go, so it shows up for you. I just did one line. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the mouth. I'm gonna go in. And again, it kind of bumps, and it goes almost to right here as well. So it almost meets right there. Whoopsies. Didn't go over that line very well. I'll just thicken it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bottom of the mouth, going in a tiny bit, and then out, and down, and then I'm gonna connect two. There is my head. Chameleons are supposed to look pretty weird. From there, I can draw an eye, and this is where creativity can come in of drawing it bigger or smaller. So I'm just gonna draw a big circle and a little circle on the inside. I like that my chameleon's nice and big. You'll notice by looking at the pictures that the chameleons kind of have those spikes around the bottom of their head. So I don't really like this line and how it separates. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm not gonna follow these directions. I'm gonna erase that line. And then I'm just gonna do some jaggedy lines towards the bottom of the head, like this. Then, flipping over, it's time for the body. The body is confusing. So I'm gonna start at the head and I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna go around and curving it like so. Then I'm gonna keep it curving until I want to stop and then I'll curve back and around. This is a tricky part and it might be beneficial for you to ask a friend for some support in that. I'm gonna connect the body just like this. Okay, got that step done. All right, I'm gonna add some fun little zigzags because I need a break from all the craziness and I don't wanna do the legs quite yet. So I'm gonna do some ziggy zags. And again, if you want to, you can erase this line right here. Say, mm, I don't want that, it's in my way. Then I'm gonna add my legs. So the first leg, I'm actually gonna draw a circle so I know like this is where le one leg's gonna be and this is the other leg. This is where they start from the body, okay? that looks good to me. So for example, I drew a circle that was right here and then right here, okay? So then from there, I'm gonna do the first joint of the leg. Looking at the image, I'm gonna go out and out and then I'm gonna draw another circle, which will go away, and then out and out and then the feet kinda going like this. It's a weird shape. It almost looks like a boomerang. And then I'll erase 
and I'll erase my circles. Again, my circles are just guidelines. Some artists don't always erase their sketch lines. They actually keep them in there and then kind of color them up. I'm gonna erase them just to get it a little bit cleaner. Next leg right here, I'm gonna go up and up. Connecting point down and down and the plate. There they are and erasing. From there, I'm gonna put in my branch and you obviously want your chameleon to kind of be touching the branch. So wherever your feet are, that's where the branch needs to kind of be. So I'm making this weird branch that my chameleon's on and it's gonna get thinner. It's gonna come out, it's gonna be thinner. I'm actually gonna make it thicker right down here like this. It's just going to be like a weird bend. And then from there, I might want to add some leaves. And they're going to be behind the chameleon. Uh, I'll add one more right here. And when we choose where we want to add the leaves, we really want to think about the composition. If you accidentally made your chameleon a little bit over one way or the other, that might mean there's some awkward space. Or if you made it smaller, there's probably a lot of awkward space. So sometimes I like to do is just take some leaves and put them around the sides. Now there's a story goes, there's a story that goes in the design world that odd numbers are more attractive than um, even numbers. So when you're putting things together, it's better to end in odds than in evens. So when people are putting windows in a house, they might put odds instead of evens. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do odd. Okay, from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a Sharpie. And we just want to make our lines nice and bold. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in, and I am just simply going to Sharpie all my lines. You want to go slow because there's nothing worse than making a mistake with a Sharpie because yeah, you'll have to figure out another way to fix that. So sometimes the lines I don't feel, um, go over that much, like these zigzags, I don't care if it's the same. There's zigzags. But I'm not gonna do this line right here. I wanna get rid of that situation. Just like that. I'm gonna do the tail a little bit. Okay, and I'm actually not gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna move on to the next step. You friends can pause the video or you might be watching this video in your next class and starting the next step. But I'm gonna go on with that. So pretending that I sharpied the whole thing, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to watercolor. So you friends will get from the free drawing area a bin for each of your tables that will have four sets of watercolors in them. In the back of the classroom, you'll be able to get cups of salt like this, do not eat it, ew, and water cups and paintbrushes. I chose to get a smaller paintbrush just because I'm gonna do smaller areas. I'm gonna scoop this all over. Doot, doot. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a watercolor technique using salt to create texture. So we're actually gonna start with our chameleon. That's what we're gonna paint first. So I'm gonna choose a color for my chameleon, but I'm not gonna just choose one, I'm gonna blend two of them together. So I'm gonna choose some blues and purples, and I, this uh, color right here next to blue, it's purple, but it doesn't really look like it. That's purple right there. So with watercolors, you wanna make sure you use a lot of water. So I'm gonna start with the head. I'm gonna put some blue down, a lot of water, or some purple down, and then I'm gonna add some blue in there too. And I wanna work fast, because I need my watercolors to still be watery. So I'm gonna go in one more time, add a little bit more blue. Okay, still watery. I'm gonna take a teeny bit of salt, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top, okay? I'm gonna show you what that does once it dries. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna do the body, and I'm gonna keep working with that kind of purple bluish colors. And honestly, friends, I don't have to be so worried about rinsing my paintbrush off for this, 
because these two colors are so close or similar to each other. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to do a little bit of the belly. Remember, I want to not let it dry. So I'm going to do about halfway. Sometimes it's best to get the edges first and then go to the middle. So I still got a lot of water. I'm going to take some salt and I'm going to sprinkle that salt on top. You're not doing a mountain of salt, you're just doing a little. I'm going to keep going. Purple. And I always just like mixing two colors because it creates it to be a little bit more interesting. And you'll notice if you look at the handout and the pictures on the back, even though like one chameleon is pink, it has different shades of that pink in it or it has some orange or some red in it. So colors that are very similar to it. Okay, I did a lot of this body and I didn't add a lot of salt. Salt, here we go. Shake, shake, shake. Again, we don't want a salt party, so don't put a ton of salt all over the place. And last part of the tail, we'll do some blues. Remember, water is your friend. A little bit of purple in there. Ooh, be careful of the tail. It's pretty detailed. And salt, salt, salt. Now the whole salt effect might not happen in this demonstration, but I'm going to tell you what happens. The salt will take all the moisture and it will suck it up. So think about we're in, when we're in winter, um, people salt the roads, right? And the salt, what it does is it melts the snow or the ice. So the same thing or similar thing is happening here. Because there was water, the salt is going to suck up that water and it's going to create a fun bubbling texture in there. Okay, so we'll see if we can look at that and see those results. I don't know if you'll be able to see them on the camera. So my next thing with watercolor is that I don't want to paint anything right around or touching the chameleon that I just painted. Because if I put paint right next to paint, it's going to bleed together. So instead, I know I'm going to focus on the outside and doing the leaves first. And again, I don't want to just choose one color. I want to work with a few. So I have some yellows. Notice how I did rinse my paintbrush off before I went into the yellow because yellow, even though it's right next to green, it's a very weak color and we don't want to destroy those watercolors. I go to the bottom of the water cup and really scrub my paintbrush. And I'll just paint those leaves. Now for the leaves, we don't have to add texture. I don't want us to get too salt-like. And also I want variety. So I only want that texture on my chameleon because the chameleon is the one thing that has that bumpy skin. The leaves are more smooth. So I'm going go in here, maybe down here, my leaves are maybe a little different and I'm gonna have some blue in those leaves. So I'm choosing colors that are right next to green because I know those are ones that will kind of color together. So that's like a forest green leaf. I'm just going to do one green green leaf. And another leaf right here. Oop, there's a little salt on that leaf. And one right here. And it's okay if you're not fully in the lines try to be as neat as possible. So once I get done with the leaves, then I would go in and I would probably do the branch and then start slowly coming from around and going in to the background. Now for the background color, what we're going to do is we're going to use contrast. Contrast is where you choose a color that is opposite from the one you chose for the main objects. So for example, Blue and purple, those are cool colors. They're more on the dark side. So if I wanted contrast, I could choose a color such as yellow. Yellow I really like to use too because it's gonna create that bright, sunny look for where the chameleon is. So I'm gonna take that yellow real, real quick. And I'm just gonna fill that space. And with that yellow, I could, if I wanted to add some purple too, or not some purple, with these, some orange if I wanted to as well. But I'm really adding that water to it and blending it so it can be soft and light. Okay, 
So I'm gonna try to dust off the salt in one space. I can see. Oh, yep, it's making a little bit of texture. Okay, gotta get my dirty salt off. Dirty salt. Okay, so you're gonna wanna do that um, on top of a garbage can. And again, you might not do it in this class period. It might go into the drying rack. And then the next class period, you can dust all the salt, salt off into the drying um, pan. But you'll kinda see that it created kind of that bumping texture. It's almost like the frost from your car texture. So, hope you friends are enjoying this project. Don't feel um, uh, frustrated because it doesn't look just like the image right here. Really embrace the characteristics of a chameleon, embrace how they're weird and a little bit goofy, and focus on drawing all the lines as you see them.